thank you, everyone. I, this is our great honor to join this uh, journal club. And today we have two, our, two of our uh, outstanding residents, Lisa and Cheyenne. They will present two uh, papers. We published next, last year on journal recontrol microsurgery. One is talking about our uh, recent innovation uh, in robotic peripheral surgery. And another will be talking about our International Microsurgery Club webinar series and looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, please share your screen. Okay. Yeah, okay. let's welcome Lisa. Lisa is now <laughs> currently our third year resident in the Prasier Reconstructive Surgery. And uh, she, she will present about the uh, robotic assisted peripheral surgery uh, systemic review. Also, our recent uh, innovation will be included. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Wen Yu Chen from Changong Memorial Hospital. Today, I'm going to share the topic with a systemic review of robotic assisted peripheral nerve surgery. Robotic assisted approaches are a tremendous revolution in modern surgery. Compared to traditional surgery, robotic surgery is considered superior for minimal invasive, higher stability, and high resolution visualization. However, the use of robotic technique in plastic surgery is still limited, and most of them were related to microvascular anastomosis. So today we're going to focus on the peripheral nerve robotic surgery. The review was conducted in the literatures from PubMed focusing on currently published uh, robotic peripheral nerve intervention techniques. And we classified them into five topics, including brachial plexus reconstruction, peripheral nerve tumor su surgery, nerve decompression, nerve harvest, and, and sympathetic trunk intervention. First one is the most discussed topic, brachial plexus reconstruction, there were five clinical studies and all concluded that the nerve computation would be, could be performed by robotic smoothly. However, the benefits of minimal invasive are not guaranteed and high risk of converting to open surgery was reported. The pictures demonstrated the uh, robotic oboling procedures reported on PRS on 2012. In these four cases, only one could be successfully performed by robotic technique with minimal invasive approach. The second one is peripheral nerve tumor related surgeries. All the tumor excision cases were done with open approach and a robotic dissection. And there were two tumor biopsy cases were performed under minimal invasive, which was considered just for research and technique demonstration. In topic three, there were only two cases demonstrated with robotic anal nerve decompression. One was done with traditional open approach and the other with minimal invasive approach. However, the, the operative time and post op follow-up was not mentioned. These cases showed the potential for creating stable working space for robot in elbow region. In the topic of peripheral nerve harvest, only few animal studies and no clinical study was reported, but we're going to share some experiences from Chang'e Memorial Hospital. Currently, we've performed nipple neurotization for the patients who received combined robotic mastectomy and breast reconstruction using the fourth intercostal nerve to restore the sensory. In traditional approach, the wound might be extended and it always needs a strong, stable traction. And the complication with peripheral injury and post-operative pain uh, also reduced with robotic technique. It is the video display the technique. We used the wound and space left by mastectomy and raised the pectoralis muscle. We harvested the intercostal nerve from lateral to medial side and the medial part served as the distal stump. 
because it was relatively far from the wound, and so the robotic arm had larger wound, uh, working space and definitely provide the advantage than traditional approach. After nerve harvest, we coated the intercostal nerve to the lateral cutaneous branch, and the distal stump was coated to the nipple for neurotization. All of, the, uh, all of the procedure was done by robotic technique, and there was no need for change position or repeated ducking, and so the operative time could be reduced. The last but not least, the sympathetic trunk intervention is a relatively new topic. However, comparing to previous topics, more cases were reported and all of them could be done by minimal invasive approach. Furthermore, the post-operative follow-up data was also more complete and detailed. Therefore, due to the operative space was deep in the nat nature body cavity, where a larger wound is inevitable in traditional surgery, sympathetic trunk reconstruction is considered the strongest indication for robotic peripheral nerve surgery. This is a video demonstrating the technique. On the left side is the short nerve graft. We passed it through the intercostal nerves and coped it, in it to the sympathetic trunk stump, which is on the right side. We had reported the technique on Journal of Thoracic Disease in 2020, and we had accomplished 41 robotic sympathetic trunk reconstruction. Most of the cases had significant clinical improvement in half a year without major complications. And our first case's long-term follow-up uh, was also reported in microsurgery. This is a 59-year-old woman she received endoscopic thoracic sigmatectomy around 20 years ago and complicated with severe compensatory sweating. We performed the first robotic sigmatectomy trunk reconstruction for her in 2017. The chart showed the scoring of symptoms followed up, tilt post-op, 42 months. We can see that most of the symptoms had significantly improvement after one year without recurrence. The most bothered compensatory sweating had the greatest improvement. On the other side, the gustatory sweating and the excessive dryness of hands also presented with significant improvement. Uh, unfortunately, the patient was suffered from c spine HIVD a few months ago, and so the symptoms with shoulder and neck soreness and extremities weakness progressed. On the other hand, uh, there were some interesting findings that rarely mentioned on the, on the literatures. These patients also complained about some psychological disorders such as low energy level, loss of motivation, anxiety, and even depressive mood occurred after uh, thoracic sympathectomy. These symptoms also had significant improvement after sympathetic trunk reconstruction, and no recurrence was found after long-term follow-up. From the literature review, robotic brachial plexus reconstruction had the most reference. While the benefit of delicate nerve coaptation without associated injury was proved, how to maintain the working space and give the advantage of minimal invasive approach is still challenging. As conclusion, in peripheral nerve surgery, robotic assisted surgery is still in the early stage. Some obstacles like stable working space in superficial area still need to be overcome. However, robotic technique still provides a potential solution for some challenge uh, circumstances arise from traditional approaches. Such as uh, where the anatomy is complicated and easily caused associated injury like brachial plexus reconstruction and deep nature cavity that hotly reached like uh, by traditional approach like thoracic cage and retroperitoneal related surgery, and also the combined surgery which robot, robot is already docked, uh, can not only reduce operative time and also without extra charge. Okay, thank you for your attention. That was an excellent presentation and quite intriguing and some very new technology. 
I would be very much interested if you could uh, tell us more about uh, the robot, its components, and is the operator. There are so many things that uh, are important and I find very interesting. Is the operator in the same room or in a separate room? And what are the components and what is the training of the operator? How does that all happen? It's it's something very fascinating. You mean is the operator in the room now? Um, you mean Tommy? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah, Lisa, can you unshare your screen? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I, I think the uh, uh, I think the currently there are different kinds of uh, robotic system. Our robotic system in Taiwan is uh, mostly from uh, United States, so we are in the same room but in a, a separate uh, control machine. So, uh, so so but for for sure it's, it has it allow, allows some distance between the uh, machine and also the control bar. Uh, maybe I can share something for you to make it more clear. Just a second. And also the training, I think is still very tricky because uh, as you know, the micro, the robot system is not trained for, not, not built for the microsurgery actually, the wider use, um, uh, is the, the, the very popular in the urology, the uh, gynecology, the psoriasis surgery, and also the uh, uh, some general surgery, but not in privacy surgery. So we use that in for the microsurgery. Actually, the uh, uh, just we create different kinds of surgery. So you you can see in the very early <clears throat> in the very early. Uh, uh, attempt they are mostly uh, I, I would say experimental so they are not very uh, they, they are not they are just like experiment so they don't have many clinical use uh, so I think only we we can find the uh, the clinical indication is that uh, very deep, deep space like in the serratic cage like in the uh, retroperitoneum so I think this is definitely the uh, best indication because the, this one is very expensive. So I can share. Okay. Just a small video so I can, I think everyone can, can see how it's set up. So the surgery surgeon will uh, insert the, uh, the arm into the body and also they will uh, intervene the surgery cage first. So this is uh, the first step is pneumolysis. Uh, so because the patient received previous uh, simastectomy, uh, the operating site will be adhered to the uh, uh, pleura. So the you 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 the surgery surgeon need to separate the pleura and also the lung, and there you, you can see some uh, scary nerves over there, but the the nerve was dead already because burned before by the uh, previous surgery. So the surgery surgeon will help me to identify the previous uh, injury nerve, and also we identify the in the coastal nerves. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile I am doing the. Uh, Super harvest and from the left leg. And some now that we have a clinical trial with Esselgen to the deserialized nerve graft. And after that, I will take over the robot system and <clears throat> yeah, just like in the same room, but in the different machine, the control bar. And I'm doing the uh, pre preparation of all the nerves. And this is for most course most time and this was time you can see the you can I, we use a uh, uh, break diamond 
and to do the use the AO nylon for the suture. This is proximal time. Actually, you should usually between the T1 and T2. This is a, a set of gain gain. And this is, a, we pass underneath the intercostal nerves for the carpation. And this is a distal sum. Sometimes we use a one sum, but sometimes we have a communication brain so we can uh, do the two nerve graph for patient. Yeah. So we complete one surgery. Until now, we have more than uh, 40 clinical cases. Yeah, the symptom improved quite a lot also. Yeah, this is uh, two uh, nerve graph around the eight to nine centimeter. Okay. Yeah, I think that's how we set up. So, uh, so I think the training is still difficult because we don't have, we, we, we there just no uh, official microsurgery training. So we just learn by practice actually. And now I teach some residents, yeah. Absolutely fascinating, extremely fascinating, very nice. Uh, I, I do not think there are many questions from the audience. They, I'm sure, are still in all. Thank you very much for presenting this. This was brilliant. Can we move on to the next presentation? And if there are any questions, we can handle them later. Yeah, thank you. I, this. I appreciate yeah. it. it must be very late in the night for you and you are still doing it for us. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, the, the second uh, reason will be uh, Dr. Shine Wei Shen Song. Uh, she just matched to our prostate and reconstructive surgery program uh, last year. And uh, she worked work with our uh, International Microsurgery Webinar Series uh, for two years. And for, for the for many things related to microsurgery, you are welcome to uh, join our webinar series and also connect to our website so you can see everything, including our uh, robotic stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, go ahead, Shine. Okay, uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, everyone. This is Cheyenne Wei Shen Song from Chang'e Memorial Hospital, Taiwan. Later, I'm going to present this topic about the International Microsurgery Club IMC webinar series about social media-based microsurgery education after the COVID-19 pandemic. And this topic is instructed by Dr. Tommy Nairon Zhang. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic was first occurred in very early 2020, and it led to the physical conferences canceled, postponed, or shifted to online platforms. And the International Microsurgery Club, as one of the biggest online educational microsurgery group in the world, we quickly developed our webinar series based on our previous successes and experiences. And uh, uh, we quickly developed the webinar series since the fe February 2021. And this is what we've already done. From February 2020 to October 2021, we've already hosted 159 webinars. Um, and the uh, peak participant is 672, and it's about the combined webinar with master series microsurgery for rest and two, and the main participants were about 100. We got very uh, good quality of speakers from all over the world, uh, mostly they are from Pacific Asia, North America, and Europe. Also, we have very broad coverage of microsurgery topics, including head and neck, flap, breast, and the chest wall. And also, compared with physical conferences, we have very plenty of time for discussion, so the young microsurgeons can learn directly from the masters. 
And most importantly, we uploaded our web webinar video to the International Microsurgery website for free access. Currently, we've already uploaded more than 250 videos, including surgery, webinar, and the conference presentations. And compared with other webinar series hosted by other plastic surgery societies that commonly share their webinar events on IMC Facebook platform, we started our webinar series at the very early beginning, and we also run our webinar series more constantly. That is, we had constant sessions, good quality, and broad coverage of topics. After the first IMC webinar was developed, there was an abrupt growth in IMC membership after the webinars developed. And currently, we have more than 16,000 of members in IMC. And here we can say that we created a win-win-win solution. The first win is for the speakers. The speakers can get feedback from the panelists and they can connect it with the experts. And the second win is for the audiences. They can learn the new things in a cost effective and time efficient way to receive very high quality educational resources. And the third win is for the hosts. We collected and archived the press less knowledge resources. And uh, so why the IMC webinar series can survive? I think the most important reason is about the good reputation of plastic and reconstructive, uh, reconstructive department in Chang'e Memorial Hospital. And also the high quality of IMC webinar series, including we hosted the event regularly and uh, we had good speakers and the moderators and the panelists. Also, we covered the old fields of microsurgery and uploaded the videos to customize the website for free review. And moreover, uh, our IMC webinar series helped cooperation between generations. For young microsurgeons like us, we were more familiar with social media, so we can connect and share information with colleagues. As for the senior microsurgeons, they are willing to share their experiences and the knowledge. And most importantly, all of these resources are free of charge. And uh, how we run a very good quality of webinar series, uh, here are some very important parts, including the pre-webinar preparation, webinar management, and the post webinar organization. The pre-webinar preparation is about contacting with speakers and the pre-recording presentation, just in case if the internet connection is not that good. And the, during the webinar, uh, we need to provide very good technical support and do troubleshooting. And after the webinars, we edited the recordings and uploaded the videos to International Microsurgery website. Currently, our work has been recognized by several SCI journals, and we've already published, published the six IMC papers on SCI journals. And to improve our, uh, uh, our quality of our webinar series, we need to be aware of the copyright issue, patient privacy issue, and also be care of the webinar fatigue. And by running the webinar series, we can explore the more various microsurgical subspecialties. Also, we got connected with the global microsurgery masters online. And by doing so, we learned to uh, self-direct learning and we learn to set up and customize the learning resources. In conclusion, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the effectiveness of IMC webinar series has been proven to be economic and efficient. Also, webinar series is a cost-effective and benefit way, uh, not only for speakers, 
but for the audiences and the host in real time. And most importantly, the webinars provide a direct interaction between generation to generations, mediating the inheritance of experiences and knowledge. Thank you for your listening. Thank, thank you very much. And again, this is a fantastic initiative. And I'm glad to see that Carlos Ohaka is also in the audience. Uh, uh, Tommy, are you aware of the Interactive Plastic Surgery Network? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, we, yeah. 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 We, we, we had you with us and we have been holding webinars very regularly. And so, of course, I have a lot of questions for you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, I learned from IPS and so much uh, when I was uh, set up IMC. Actually, we Actually, we are not compete, but we just separate the microsurgery part. But we we really appreciate IPSN set up this uh, platform in 2012. And uh, Dr. Osaka, thank you so much. I, I really learned a lot from you and the crew. Thank you. Thank you. How do you select your speakers? Is there a panel of experts who select the speakers or you do it yourself? And what do you base it on? Carlos, you are muted. If you are speaking, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. Uh, other Carlos. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Uh, Carlos, my question to Tommy was, how does he select the speakers? Okay. <laughs> On and, what uh, basis do you select your speakers? Yeah, for, yeah. for us, you, you know, you know very well. So, sorry, Tommy, can I speak? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I think uh, Pablo Carlos want to say something, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, these both groups are very interesting because we have grown like, like the same time, you know, and uh, your field is very specific. And sometimes I, I'm, I am uh, trying to follow in. And uh, in the starting, we, uh, before the pandemic, in the pandemic, uh, we try to, to look for people internationally uh, known and uh, but now it's, it's surprisingly that the people most uh, want to contribute giving conferences. So now times we have uh, two months ahead fully uh, with uh, uh, webinars because they write to us that they, they want to give us some conferences. So uh, th this is the one of the benefits after uh, with COVID uh, uh, pandemic, you know? So I, I mean, uh, and I can suppose that it's the same for you that we have uh, grown and not, not so bad has been because of the pandemic, really, you know? That's it. Um, Tommy, would you like to answer? Yeah, you thank you. your speakers? Yeah, thank you, Professor Carlos. I totally agree. I think this, uh, I, in our webinar, in, we do it regularly during the weekend, and we just invite the people uh, who is very active in the field of microsurgery, uh, the, the, the expert in different fields of microsurgery, and is a great master or the young doctors, but he, is, but he or she is active in the social media. Actually, we just invite them, and yeah, they, 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 they are very happy to share their work online because uh, especially during the pandemic, it's very difficult to travel. So they are happy to share their work uh, with us very in a very easy way. And also we do the uh, do the very regular during the sun Saturday and Sunday, uh, regular time. And also if you miss it, you can just uh, see the record in our website. So I think this is a very efficient system and uh, people like it. And so we can just keep continue to do that. And how do you manage the time differences? How do you select what time to present? Because uh, everybody wants different time. Yeah, yeah, this is very important. But so in the very beginning, we just set up a time. Uh, in Taiwan, we have uh, we set up at 9 p.m. because we usually the, our event will be two hours. So uh, if you're two hours after that, we'll be 11 p.m. And but in our east, we have uh, Japan and Korea, one hour ahead from us. So they will finish at midnight. I think there's a limit. So uh, for the uh, Middle East, it's around the afternoon, Europe afternoon. And also in uh, in America, 
uh, the West Coast will be start at 6 a.m. like San Francisco and Los Angeles. In the East, like, like uh, New York City or Boston will be start at 9. And we also need to consider about the time difference between the summer and the winter. And for the, the winter time, the Los Angeles will be start at 5 a.m. I think that's a limit. And but unfortunately, we need to uh, sorry to the people from Australia because they usually start at 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. Uh, to uh, just at midnight. <clears throat> and also in some, sometimes very special like India will be started at 6 30. Yeah, so it's 30 minutes different. So, but finally, I think just if everyone just uh, familiar with this time, they can uh, reserve the time and join. I think this is uh, very important for us. Okay, and uh, Shayan said that all your lectures are pre-recorded. Yeah, so, Shayan, do you want to answer the questions? The, some some pre-recorded. Uh, yes, uh, actually some of the webinars were pre-recorded and some of them are just uh, uh, presented in real time. And this is because uh, sometimes the presenter some some of them may be not that so familiar with uh the webex or events. So pre-recording will help them to uh, prevent some uh, technical error. And uh, on your hand, if uh, uh the area of the speakers may not have very a good connection to the internet, and we will also recommend them to pre-record their presentation. Yes. Initially, you started with Zoom, but then shifted from Zoom. Were you having problems with Zoom? Mm, actually, first we started uh, it on the uh, Facebook OBS system, but uh, later we found that uh, because of some uh, uh, patient privacy issue or some uh, we show some picture or some videos about the operation and surgery. So uh, those Facebook uh, wouldn't allow us to uh, present this continent. So later we shifted to Zoom and the WebEx and uh, both of the system is good. So uh, sometimes we, uh, we use it depends on uh, the speaker's uh, prevalence, yeah. And what area audience do you finally catch? Usually, which countries are uh, audience in your webinars? Mm -hmm. Can uh, I can rephrase it? Uh, during your live webinar, uh, uh -huh. which country audience are usually uh, in greater numbers? Which of the audience? Yeah, which country people like? Uh, because uh, when we conduct webinars, usually the people are from Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, and the Arab countries because it's a similar time zone. So which countries do you usually get as audience? Oh, you, you mean uh, most of uh, our audience comes from which country, right? Yes, 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 exactly. I think most of them still from a Pacific Asia. What do you think about that, Tommy? Yeah, actually, the uh, the web based system doesn't show the country, but I think the people from everywhere for sure. Uh, yeah, I would say it's from. I I I don't really uh, count down the number, but yeah, but yeah, it's from everywhere. I I believe. But for mm -hmm. sure, in IMC, the most people from India and Egypt and United States and Taiwan. So I would say, yeah, it's a lot of people from India, Egypt, and Taiwan. Yeah. So some are. I'm sorry, I'm asking so many questions. It's a very interesting topic. And do yeah. you think that uh, there is still a future of physical meetings, or do you think these webinars will just take over and replace the physical meetings? Yeah, I think the Shayan and uh, uh, Lisa I, can answer the question. They are young people. Yes, I, I, I think in the future, uh, I think in the future, maybe 
Um, the webinars need to cooperate with the physics conferences. Maybe it will be in a hybrid form. Yeah, because uh, our, our goal is not to uh, take over the physical conferences, but we want to uh, provide a more efficient and effective way of uh, knowledge transmission. So I think maybe cooperation is the answer. Uh, Lisa, do you want to comment more? Because yeah, you are also involved in a lot in this system. Lisa, can you? Uh, uh, no, can you... I totally agree with Shaen. <laughs> yeah, I, I think yeah, we we all involved maybe more than two hundred webinars, and also not only in IMC but also in our department meetings. So. I think this uh, in the future there will be a hybrid, hybrid form. So now, now it's in our many meetings, and actually, uh, I think this is uh, webinar resources very beneficial for young surgeons and also for the people from developing countries, and because they can just we we build we set up everything for free. So I think that most people can learn it in a very very easy way. And also, also, so I enjoy the I enjoy webinar quite a lot. Yeah, all kinds of webinars. I I personally feel that uh, the physical conferences will definitely decrease in numbers uh, mm -hmm. because this uh, webinars the resources like you have two fifty webinars uploaded on the website. So anybody who is looking for knowledge can easily go to these webinars. And similarly, there are so many other resources available now online that the need for going to a physical conference for gaining knowledge is decreasing. So it is need and supply, demand and supply thing. It looks like the physical conferences will take a hit. Uh, we also have with us Michele Zocchi and Vel Sakar, who are also veterans of webinars. So we wouldn't mind having their opinion as well. What do you think about this presentation and about webinars in general? Yeah, I think this kind of... Well, uh, so, uh, go ahead. Please. No, I was just uh, absolutely agreeing with uh, the statement of Carlos. The only, probably the only real advantage of this uh, terrible damn pandemic has been the fact that we are forced, we have been forced to switch it to another way to teach and to share experience. And uh, even if I strongly believe that, uh, unfortunately, at least the way it's going, things here in Europe, pandemic is not very close to end up. But uh, uh, even when, hopefully soon, I don't know, the pandemic will be over, we should uh, try to do our best in order to maintain this habit that has been absolutely fantastic. I'm just seeing practically uh, being the organizer of dozen of, of meeting in my, in my career in prisons, there is a major issue that is uh, represented by the, uh, the sponsorship, the relation with the, with the, uh, with the producer. Because uh, you know, the, all the, the event in prisons are always involving a huge amount of money, especially the largest is the meeting, the largest is the amount of money that is involved. And, uh, and uh, in webinars or in, uh, even in a hybrid meeting, this uh, in some way a little bit compromising or even a, a, a totally compromising. So we are going in some way to lose the support of some, um, of some mentors, of some uh, uh, sponsors. Uh, but I think that we should work around uh, together. Uh, I, I'm here just, uh, Tommy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a baby in, in, in microsurgery because uh, I stopped to do microsurgery almost 20 years ago when it was uh, at the, really at the beginning. And I went back to microsurgery recently, only uh, less than two years ago uh, for the, uh, my absolutely conviction that uh, microsurgery can be um, can benefit of uh, regenerative uh, technologies. Uh, and I'm here to learn and to, and to see all the fantastic things that you're always presenting. So we need to, to absolutely to commit all together to maintain this network of teaching for young people, for creating connection with, uh, 
dinosaur like myself and the new generations that uh, uh, in some way are looking at us uh, very often uh, uh, in an undeserved manner for us um, to as a point of reference. So I, I'm absolutely supporting. This is the best thing that happened in our specialty in the last two years was the, this growing of, of way of, of connecting, of teaching, of sharing, putting everybody at the same level. There is no more people in the podium making show off. Here we are really here to share as a friend. And this is a, something fantastic that we should maintain forever. Yeah, Thank thank you. you, Thank you yeah. I, I just uh, you, you just visited us two years ago before the pandemic. Now everything changed. But we can really happy to still can meet you online. I, I think this is definitely definitely the revolution of the knowledge because uh, in the past we learned from the textbook, the journal and the physical meeting, but now uh, we can learn online together and also this kind of uh, social uh, events. Yeah, so I really appreciate it and happy to join. Uh, Professor Vail, yeah. would you like to comment? Hello, Zaya, how are you? I'm very happy to meet you again. Uh, it's my pleasure. To, uh, thank you. I have to congratulate uh, Tommy and uh, Sang for this uh, proper evaluation, for this experiment and for this uh, 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 technique, which is new to all of us. Uh, if you know, my, Dr. Zaya was uh, my dear friend and colleague in this uh, um, uh, trial. I started um, in March 2019 with the first uh, lo lockdown of the, uh, of the, uh, the epidemic. It was very, I, I think it was 2020, sorry. Uh, it was very difficult to assess it's very, I started with a very primitive trial. I, I, I just even didn't know what the Zoom uh, program our application is uh, talking about. So I was having a, um, a daily uh, conference with my department with only 30 to 40 um, surgeons from our uh, city uh, physically attend this weekly conference. So when the lockdown started, we, we started to show how to make this uh, online and it started um, maybe in uh, 20 something 23 or 24th of march 2020 with uh, 40 or 50 surgeons uh, from our country only uh, it, it went good and it ended with in international surgeons and audiences from all over the, the world it, it happened maybe, I know that so many friends like uh, Dr. Zaya, Dr. Salah, and so many of our friends, Dr. Uh, Greg Evans and Dr. Rod Rorich, uh, all of them was very, very, very helpful to reach. Uh, may uh, Dr. Zaya asked uh, Cheyenne and Tommy about the, uh, uh, the audience. I did have, because I was having uh, uh, with me uh, um, a good company to show me some statistics. Uh, I ended there with uh, 750 audience in one uh, of the last webinars from 48 countries. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some of them, I was very, I, we are in Egypt, uh, away from uh, uh, Latin America. We, we, we have so many audiences, maybe 30% from Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina. Uh, the Latin American, uh, it, it, it was dependent upon the surgeon with us who are going to talk. He has, uh, a, a, as if he's a, an international singer, has some fans all over the world. So he's bringing with him his fans from all over the countries. It went very good. Also, I'm very happy to, uh, with Cheyenne, uh, presenting the drawbacks of uh, the, the trial of uh, maybe the privacy, the... Um, and the um, how how are most of the people and many many audience many some speakers uh, refuse to uh, to to uh, to maybe record the um, uh, the presentation because of uh, the pay, the patient photos and something like this. Uh, maybe eighty percent of our uh, presentations uh, went live on uh, so many platforms like uh, YouTube channels and uh, Facebook. 
the whole and all, the 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 the, the, the experiment with uh, and trial was very very good. Uh, many uh, 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 all of us were uh, very helpful. I think also um, without this uh, application, so many uh, the, um, I, I I hope uh, distinguished speakers wouldn't have to come from Mexico to Egypt or Pakistan or from the United States to have uh, this long journey to talk with us. So it, uh, I, I remember that uh, Greg Evans uh, uh, told me that he has only maybe uh, one and a half or uh, maybe 60 to 70 minutes before his uh, uh, operation list uh, in the morning of Friday. So we, uh, uh, I'm, I'm answering about the uh, uh, question of the, the time zone difference. We have uh, with uh, uh, great lectures to change our uh, plans to uh, according to his uh, work. So he came us to give us our uh, his lecture. Uh, uh, it was 3 a.m. 3 p.m. in Cairo, and it was 7 a.m. in USA uh, before his operation list. So it was very, very useful to all of us. I think we have to reevaluate this. Uh, also, we had uh, some um, some benefits, uh, Cheyenne, with uh, in our webinar, which uh, continued uh, for maybe the more than uh, continuous twenty four or twenty five weeks uh, with many speakers. Uh, some of uh, the young fellows working in uh, Gulf area on uh, or, uh, or or Africa. They uh, uh, in the in the on in the era of uh, epidemic, they needed some uh, certificate of attendance to complete their CV. So we started uh, to give this uh, a, a trial to give them an, uh, a documented uh, certificate uh, with the aid of some uh, companies. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Salah helped us in this. Uh, this is uh, a long trial. Sorry for uh, talking too much to you, but it was very interesting uh, uh, for answering uh, the uh, question, what is the, the, the future of uh, this experiment or this trial or this uh, the type? I think it will, it will, it, it will continue, but, but not as the main uh, part of, uh, of, uh, of teaching or, uh, or, or meeting. So it will be, as uh, Tommy said, it will be the hybrid meeting will help to reduce the cost of uh, traveling and, uh, and, and make only the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, evaluation for the social or even for the workshops and hands-on uh, conferences. Thank you again for your nice and great lecture and, uh, and for this uh, presentation, Cheyenne, and for your work, uh, Tommy. Thank you, Zaya, for giving me the chance to speak with our friends. Thank you. Cheyenne, I need time for a quick question for Tommy, please. A uh, technical question before to end up the uh, Tommy. Can I can I ask you something, please? Yeah, uh, sure, sure. One of the main reason I joined this webinar, beside the pleasure to meet you all, is the fact that I'm um, pretty much attracted by robotic uh, surgery. And um, in my paper last year related to the use to 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 uh, regenerative assisted microsurgery RAM, uh, uh, I mentioned the evolution of the use of, uh, of a specific uh, a, a donning purpose robotic for anastomosis. Because uh, those are that are mainly coming from uh, Holland, I know that probably you know from, from Denmark, uh, we have a few young colleagues uh, making excellent work on this field. Uh, mainly our aiming to reduce the scaling, the tremors, so to scaling down the, the, the tremors and to um, increase the limit of, uh, of the size of microanastomosis, where uh, if we take a limit of 0 0.3 mil as already a, a very, very high level uh, anastomosis, like tech anastomosis, uh, I don't see how more than that limit can go? So which is your opinion in using robotic assistance in anastomotic, especially in um, uh, lymphatic, uh, in lymphatic microsurgery? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I think the robotic system in Europe and the United States are different. 
And in Europe, there are different kinds of、uh, setup like Musa, and also they they probably they help for the very very tiny and I suppose like Shenzhen Q in the Netherlands. She present just like using LVA, and just he just、uh, actually he she just see the microscope and use some yeah to to、uh, in in the side maybe side table just、uh, to to for the delicate、Enjoy、joystick.、Mode. Yeah, yeah. So, uh. But I think the the robot system from United States, the Da Vinci, is for the uh, uh, is different because it's a design initially designed for the uh, uh, deep cavity, so the purpose are different. But I think the future be, for the like Musa system, they can help in the uh, yeah, definitely you can just、uh, avoid the tremor. So、uh, if it's not very expensive, I think most hospital will buy it and help in the very.、Uh, Small vessels or LVA, I think it's possible. I I don't know the regulations because I I as I know just just uh, uh like Japan they are developing the new robot system. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that because they are very dedicated. Yeah, but I think in the future I think this quite will be a very very powerful weapon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Uh, my question to Shyan: Do you? Issue attendance certificates or CME certificates to the audience, and how do you manage that?、Uh, you mean that、uh, do we provide、uh, certificates to the audience of IMC webinar series, right? Yeah. Yes. Do you provide certificates to the audience? Um, current currently, we do not provide certificates to the audience, but actually, I have a. Uh, talking、uh, with Tommy about that, maybe this is a, a good idea because I think、uh, by doing so, maybe we can attract more audience. <laughs> But I I think currently、uh, there are still some problem because、um, there are many audiences in each. Webinar events. So,、uh, if we need to、uh, provide a certificate to all of the audiences, and、uh, we need to make sure that they really listening to the webinars and、uh, how much time they did spend on the webinar events, and、uh, that might be a problem. So, maybe we will、uh, think about that in the future. Yeah. Yeah, and if you find a way, we would also like to know how to do it because. A lot、yeah. of people ask us for certificates, and we don't have a way、uh, to assess if they have actually attended. So I don't know、yeah. what to do. Yes. Yeah. And and before we close, I would like one more opinion.、Uh, we have tried、uh, assessments online. We have done formative assessments, but we have not yet tried summative assessment. Uh, have you experience with online assessments?、Um, online assessment, assessment, you, you, you like mean taking the, exams online. You mean questionnaire study?、Uh, exam, it's like、uh, training exams.、Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, now the Google form is very popular, so we do now the webinar. But in our department, we. We use、uh, to evaluate the resident. We just、uh, every season we just、uh, a small quiz, maybe forty quiz, and just do it online. I think that's、uh, very valuable during the pandemic. Yeah, just use the Google system. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I I would I would actually like to invite you to our、uh, preparatory course that we have every six months, and I would like you to experience、uh, the online viva. The online quizzing that we do with our residents, with the faculty from around the world, and also residents from around the world—it's a great experience. I hope you will enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very popular. Also, the, nowadays the people just、uh, interview the residents online, very popular. Yeah, especially in a big country like United States, the people, the residents don't need to travel, fly over the to the another city during the weekend. They just、uh, everything is very online. I think that'll be it. Future, yeah, yeah. I hope we can collaborate. Thank you very much, Tommy, and、yeah. thank you, Shyan and Lisa. I greatly appreciate you sparing time for us. And these were two very informative 
articles that you discussed with us and i do hope our collaboration continues and thank yeah. you very much all the audience for being with us yeah thank you so much our pleasure to join thank you so much thank you bye bye nice, you. Bye -bye. nice to see you tommy michael you so michael and uh, yes. of course dr sia it, it's a yeah. pleasure to see you again carlos thank you yeah, carlos yes thank you carlos thank you, yes. you, you. drive safe drive thank you bye bye <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tommy. Thank you, bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, bye bye.